Let's take a look at audio file management in Cubase 6. As we record a lot of different audio files in your system, we realize that there will be hundreds of WAV files stored on your hard disk. Let's take a look at how we could manage these. To start a new project, let's go to our file menu to new project, and this will open up your project assistant. You can choose between different templates here, or you could actually have your own template, but the most important thing is the path at the bottom of the project assistant. We could use the default location, uh, and you could give this a name, or you could actually choose to prompt for a file location. This is handy if you want to record all of your audio files to a secondary dedicated audio drive. Um, so it's really important to have each song have a unique folder. So this will make your life much easier. So think of each song or project as having a unique folder. We'll create this and let's add eight audio tracks. So I'll come right over here and let's add, double click here, let's add eight mono tracks. Now, one of the things I like to do when if I'm recording multiple tracks simultaneously is to place them into a folder. So I'm gonna have the top track selected by default, hold down the shift key, select the bottom file, all my tracks will be selected. And then I'm gonna choose the option after right clicking of move selected tracks to new folder. I'm gonna call this folder drums. Now, another very important thing is to name the tracks before you record. Once again, name the tracks before you record. And because the actual audio file name will be derived from the track name. So double click in the name field and you type in kick. Hit the tab key and this will actually allow you to name each of the tracks very quickly. It will automatically be selected. And we'll call this Tom 1, Tom 2, Tom 3, and we'll say overhead left, overhead right. Now, if, as I record, enable, and monitor enable my folder track, all of the tracks within that folder will automatically carry over. I could also visually minimize and by opening and closing my folder tracks. And as I hit record, we can see now that all my track names will be carried over in the names of the audio files themselves. Now let's say if you used the word kick and the producer wanted the audio file to be called bass drum, you could also see the names in the info line here and a lot of the information on the file itself. Uh, if you don't see this info line, click right up here and activate the info line and then click and then you'll see the info line. So let's say the producer wants to use the term bass drum for all file names. Come here, hit the tab key, type it in the info line, and now you can automatically rename the audio file right there. So when in doubt, always, always name the files beforehand. I've seen hundreds of people that have uh, 2000 audio zero one files under system. Don't do it. Now, one of the things that comes in very handy is if we're doing live recording, oftentimes you may want to record onto two different drives or the client may immediately after the show want to take a hard drive with them. So what I'm going to do is come here, I'm going to take my folder track and I'm going to duplicate this track. So I'm going to duplicate my folder track and then I'm going to place both of these tracks within its own folder track. So we'll have kind of a nested folder track. Now I'm going to select the bottom files here. If I want these files to go to a different hard drive, I could come right here and choose set record folder. So as I do this, I'm going to say, let's put this onto a folder I labeled A on a different drive, hit open. And now I could record enable on all of my tracks. And as I come right here, we'll open up this folder as well and we'll record. These tracks will be on 
my internal drive, these tracks will be on the secondary drive and all of the routing is automatically preserved as well. My files will actually be organized in my pool. So I could open up my pool window here, view all of my audio files there. Now, if I wanted to import files, I could come right there, click on the import button. I could have this automatically go into my project directory, or I could have it retain its folder position here. So my pool shows me my names, how many times the file was used, the tempo stamp, the signature, as well as the path for the files recorded themselves. If I wanted to get rid of a particular file, I could just drop it right into my trash can. I could do that. Or if I wanted to import that file into my project, I could come right here, open our pool window. Let's choose a file here, a track, go to our pool window. And I'll select my saxophone track that I imported. And we could actually insert this into the project at the cursor the left locator or the origin. So I can now just insert that file right there. Now, if I've done sample editing on my file, let's say where I've defined regions and I've added regions and we'll call this region one. And let's say this is a particular hook or vocal part or part of dialogue. I can now come here and in my pool, I'll see that reflected as well. So we'll go to our pool window and I can see my saxophone part and I could choose my regions here. And if I wanted to turn those regions into their own audio files, instead of just being a reference to the original file, I could go to my audio and choose bounce selection and that could automatically turn those files directly there. Now the pool also has some great organization functions because we have the use of folders. Sometimes when we have hundreds and hundreds of different audio files, we could actually come here and we could create a folder. So I could call this my drum folder and I could have a, a folder for vocals, for guitars. And now I could come here, select my files and drag these into the folder so that I could organize and have quick access to all of my files. Now once I wanted to back up my system and I wanted to maintain a project. I could also come right over here and I could choose to prepare the track archive. And this would allow you to automatically take all the files and place them into a common folder. And one of the easy ways of being able to back up your project, if you have loops and different audio files copied from throughout your system, is to go to your file menu and choose backup project. And what you could do here is as you do this, you could choose a new folder and we'll call this backup. Hit open and you'll be prompted where you could give it a new file name. So we'll call this drums one. And I could actually choose to minimize the audio file. So if I didn't use the entire audio file, but maybe just a couple measures of one take, I could do that. I could also freeze any offline edits. And if I have files that weren't referenced or used in the project, I could choose to remove the files. And then this will basically create a new project in just a matter of seconds with all the files so that I could have that and be safe with all my files. So as you can see, using the pool and different tracking methods, it's easy to manage the hundreds of audio files that can be generated in a typical session.